Well, good day, tubes. How's you hanging? Pretty good here. Pretty good here. So today is question and answer with Bill, with me. Um, you guys sent me some questions, so I'm going to open up the emails. If I can figure this out. And we got 24, almost 29, not quite, 24. So we're going to start at the start. I'm going to answer your questions and uh, try my best to say your names if they're here. Some are uh, like other names, like the first one from Gaming Guy. Uh, he says, Hey Bill, been, been a big fan for many years now. I live in Maine. My question is, how many tractors have you owned? Own with what years were they and how much horsepower do they have? Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> how many tractors? Give me a second here. Now, if you're, if you're asking me how many tractors that I personally owned myself, is myself I've owned four if you want to know all together how many tractors I've had in my possession and operated would be about nine <laughs> roughly um, what horsepower is there I can give you the brands maybe um, horsepower wise I don't know some of them are all the same so we have had we originally had a 2N. If you look back on my channel, there is a video of a 2N. And uh, it pretty much is like this one out here with the high-speed Sherman transmission. Um, I don't know, remember what year that one was, but it was in a lot better shape than this one is here. Um, of course, you guys know Boris, and he was an 8N to start with. And then uh, my stepdad, uh, he put all the V8 and stuff in it and did all the stuff to it. So uh, that one is about 100 and five horse roughly the way it sits um, normally it's about 23 horse in those tractors so that's why I don't really use it for a lot of pull-in or pulling the disc or cultivator because it would just shred that clutch and transmission right out of there right so uh, it probably would hold up but I'm um, no we're not gonna do much with it other than maybe pull a float in a trailer or go up and down the road with it so uh, what else the Jubilee is about 20 they're 20 something odd horse I'm not 100% sure on them uh, that's my stepdad's. What else is there? Should have wrote them all down because now I forget half of them. Uh, the John Deere AR. It's like 20 some odd or almost 30 horse or something like that for the two the two cylinders in it. I think it's like that. I don't, know. don't quote me on that one either. Um, what else is there? Um, this 2N out here is about 23 horse roughly. Somewhere on there. Um, else was there now if you're getting into the backhoe the John Deere 110 TLB it's about 43 horse um, and then I've had three of the little green tractors one was a 4110 was the first one and it was like 20 I shouldn't be saying horsepower because I just don't really know if I'm telling you the right one um, there well this one we got now is about 32 horse the 2720, I think it was, was about the same. It was a little bit less than the uh, 4110 way back was probably, I don't know, they're all Yanmars. They're all fairly close, those little subcompacts. So, um, and what years, I don't know, I can't tell you that. But anyways, uh, but there's probably a couple other tractors I'm forgetting about here and there. But uh, anyways, there's the first question. Anyways, the second question is from Chase. Will you play GTA 6 when it comes out? Uh, P.S. Love your vids. Thanks, bud. I love making them. And GTA 6, I don't know. Uh, depends how computer intensive it is. My computer should be able to run it, but it'll probably need an upgrade of something and to run that game, and that's usually how it works. But yeah, I'll probably will whenever it comes out, if it ever comes out. Uh, next question is from Brandon. What is the story on the mayor's tractor? He, he texted me one day. He's like, would you help me out? I'm like, sure. He's like, would you come with me up to my uncle's place to pick up my dad's tractor? He wants it out of there. I'm like, sure. So he didn't have anywhere to keep it, so we brought it and dropped it here. We did a bit of work to it. We took the carburetor off and the fuel tank off. The fuel tank was leaking, full of rusty crap, and uh, it got all sucked out of the carburetor, and then it wouldn't quit. It, it ran until we got it on our trailer, my trailer, and then and that was it. So we had to push it off. So. It's sat there ever since, so I don't know. I haven't talked to him uh, for a wee bit now, and um, it still sits as that. So 
um, it still turns over. I had my crank out there the other day and actually was able to crank it over this hand crank we made for our tractor. And it still turned over. So I don't know. I guess I'll just maybe drop it out of his place soon. I don't know. <laughs> Next one is from Ashley. Hello, Bell. What made you start your YouTube channel? Thank you. Thank you. You was one of the reasons I started my channel. Uh, my channel is a... JP Garden Machines. I repair garden equipment. Keep up the great work from Ashley. Um, why did I start my YouTube? Mostly because taking pictures of my kids and stuff and I thought, oh, what if my computer crashes or what if I lose the disc that are on? I wanted to progressively film them as they kind of grew up. And you can look back and see, you know, like Dylan's first ride, his first um, you know, ride on the ATV and stuff, stuff like that, right? I wanted to kind of, because I thought, okay, YouTube's probably not going to lose our stuff, but if they do, well, we're all screwed anyways, right? Uh, now I do have pictures and stuff of the kids way back and stuff. And I've got a lot of knowledge of just naturally fixing and maintaining stuff, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, another reason, actually, was I did a search on YouTube way, 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 way back when I first started, and there was, like, pretty much nothing to do with cemeteries. So I'm like, you know, I run a cemetery here. That'd be kind of cool to show what happens. And, you know, there's a question coming up, actually, from that, too. Um, and uh, it was kind of for that. And uh, there's another result coming up from that, too, which I'll get to in a minute. But uh, anyway, so that's kind of why I started it. Uh, just to uh, try to give some of my knowledge and uh, record the kids. The kids got to a certain age, they're like, I don't want to be in that. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. So there's this quite a distance where you don't see the kids for like ever. <laughs> so they get to that age where they just weren't interested in that, you know. Um, so yeah, that's sort of why I did it. And the next one is from Austin. Oh, a slingshot question. Uh, hey, Bill, love your love all your content. I've been watching you for the past five years, and I just bought a 2019 Slingshot SL. Oh, that's sort of like ours. What color, bud? Uh, and I love it. Can't wait till you get yours. Uh, we've had ours out once, and then all of a sudden it turned to freaking winter here again. So welcome to Canada. So that sucked. So, I mean, it's ready to go whenever the weather. I don't ride that thing unless it's whew, minimum, minimum, minimum 15 degrees Celsius out. Any more than that, you're just going to freeze. Because, you know, you got to think, you know, I'm standing here, it's 15 degrees, it's nice. Not when you're going like 100 kilometers an hour. It's a lot different. <laughs> it's like total night and day different. So, I, uh, when we're up to 17, 20, we'll go out. But other than that, no. Um, so, yeah, we've had ours out once. Uh, I was wondering uh, what you thought about the new 2020 Auto manual slingshots have you have a good one now i've heard have a good one from austin thanks austin uh now i've heard that the automatics are absolutely freaking terrible i've never test driven one test drove one um and apparently right now they're not making manuals so i'm like wow now the problem with that is and this is what polaris wanted they did the automatics to flood the roads with slingshots that's what's going to happen. You're going to see way more of them now because a lot of people don't want to drive standard. It doesn't bother me. I could drive pretty much anything. People don't want to drive standard anymore. People have gotten, I guess, lazy and they just want to click. Okay, let's go all day. I love switching things. Some do, some don't. But anyways, so there you go. So uh, leave, a, leave a comment of... Uh, oh, I'm chirping out there. Leave a comment what color yours is, bud. So the next one is from Christina. Are you planning on playing more GTA 5 or would uh, or World of Tanks anymore? I'm trying my best to get Dylan onto the World of Tanks again. Sometimes he'll have a little spurt and want to play a bunch of tanks and then all of a sudden he gets frustrated and then doesn't want to. There is either a lot of people with a whole pile of skill way more than mine in World of Tanks or they're hacking. There's no way that one guy, seriously, honestly, can get eight kills. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, so that's why I generally don't play tanks too much. I find it's like, I'm sitting here, and nobody can see me, and I'm dead. They're shooting at me. What the crap? So it ticks me off. So, uh, GTA 5. Yeah, we might fire up some more GTA 5. I don't know. I haven't played it for a while. Um, we were playing for a while. I don't know what we did the single player. Run whole run through that. I kind of still regret playing that, putting that on my channel because it is such a vulgar game. <sighs> but you guys were asking for it, so I'm like, okay. But um, 
online might do some of that. I don't know. There's a lot of hackers that don't like hackers. So uh, I try to play games as perfectly honestly as I can, other than maybe farm sim the odd time, hack it in money. But I don't go on and exploit things and try to, you know, kill and stuff because people can do that. Anyways, next one from Andrew. I <clears throat> just uh, started playing Farm Sim 19 because of the lockdown here in Western Australia. Uh, we are restricted to our local district of around 70 square kilometers. For the state, that's 3,000 kilometers long and 2,000 kilometers wide. Uh, we are in a tiny space. Anyhow, I just wanted to ask you a question about trying to attach a front end loader and bucket on my tractor. Uh, I can presume in Farm Sim. It has a front end attachment, but everything I have tried hasn't worked. Can you help? Um, okay. When you get your tractor, it'll have a screen on there that'll say blah 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 attaches and the number basically of it. You gotta make sure you get the right ones. Pretty much, if you're using regular in-game tractors, I think pretty much everything should work. If you're getting into mods, you're gonna have to really look at it and make sure it's all compatible because some stuff doesn't hook to some stuff. Um, for instance, we've got a small combine we're using in our farm sim right now for farm sim weekend and um, it'll attach the bigger header but it won't lift it and it won't uh, drive or something like that. But if you put the proper header on it, it'll work fine. So make sure you got the right thing, right? So, all right, next question. From Joel, a few videos ago when you were using your mini axe to clean out around the trees, just out behind the shed here, um, I noticed you preferred to swing the boom in, uh, instead of preferred to swing the boom to dump instead of swinging the machine. Do you normally do that, or are you just used to how the backhoe swings and dumps? Anyways, just something I noticed. I was curious about. Have a good one. Um, no, because I was right under the trees there. I was kind of <laughs> into the trees when I so I. So I just moved a little bit and then just moved the arm. I'd rather the, I'd rather the arm hit the trees than me. So, because I was like right under the branches and I didn't really want to, you know, crash into the branches and stuff. But normally, normally I use the swing of the whole machine. Um, it's easier to kind of, because then you can just sit there and look ahead. You don't have to move your head, right? And hurting your neck and stuff and do that all day. You're going to hurt your neck rather than just sit there and do nothing. Um, sometimes when I dig a dig a cremation grave though I'll sit so say this is the monument and if I'm too close I'll have to make the machine over here and then turn the boom sideways a bit so it kind of angles it so I can get the boom straight it's really super handy because you can be away from the monument but turn but then turn your boom so you're digging perfectly into the hole works great so thanks for that question it's a good one there uh, lethargic gym nerf bullets Holy cow, this is going back. Someone's been watching for a while, this one. <laughs> Did Dylan ever fire off all two packs of those foam bullets? So way back, I, th I don't remember where I got them from. eBay, probably. He got into the Nerf guns, Dylan a bit. And Laura a bit, too. Not so much. She didn't like getting hit, but she liked shooting them, right? So I understand. He kept losing bullets all the time. And, oh, we're going to go to Walmart buy more. I'm like, Really? You know, they're like six bucks a pack of like 10 or 12 or whatever they were. I'm like, holy cow, this is adding up. So I went and looked online and you could get a whole bundle of them. And they weren't exactly right. They were a little hair bit thicker, but they still shot out of the guns pretty good. Uh, I, th I don't even remember what I got them for, but it was like a bundle of like 2,500 of them or something. I got two of those bundles, but no, he's... Uh, Hasn't shot a nerf forever, you know. I think he went through like half of the first one and then gave some away to his friends. And I think he still, I think he still got one full pack there. But uh, I don't really remember. I'd have to ask him on that one. But yeah, that's going back. That's a while ago. So the next one's from Farmer Cell. Uh, why can you not work in the shop down at the cemetery? All of your tools are down there. Well, there was what there they gave me a. Um, explanation of is a privacy issue. I'm like, okay, and that's all. That's all it was left at. Privacy. They, um, I guess, didn't like the stuff I was displaying. I don't know. They never told me really anything. Just don't do that. Don't do that anymore. So I thought. So we built a little shop up here, and eventually maybe have to add on to this shop to uh, <laughs> see what I got here is like a half a building. Then I want to do the other half of the building down there. So it kind of makes it like a whole building. So it'd be like two of these. 
But um, materials in Canada are so expensive here now. Wood to probably build something like this size would probably cost me at least, oh, it depends what you got. Plywood for the roof, the two by eights, and then the two by fours. This is a fairly big building though. I bet you I'd be 23, 2400 bucks, taxes and stuff. And then you still haven't insulated. And I still haven't finished insulating this because the insulation kit is like 800 and some dollars for the spray foam kit that would should finish the rest of this off. So I do want to do that this summer. Um, it's expensive though. That's, you know, holy crap. Like building stuff here in Canada is terrible now. A bundle of shingles is like 28 bucks, somewhere around there, depending on what you get, of course. I get the uh, fairly decent ones too, so they last forever, but. That's kind of why I don't film down there anymore, and uh, they just basically told me don't do that anymore. I'm like, okay. So we had to make changes and I'm working up here a bit. Uh, next one is from Richard. Richard Spivey. I think I said that right. Hello, Bill. I've watched your YouTube channel ever since you started. Uh, that's what I was wondering if there's any way you could send me some stickers. Thank you, Richard. I need your address, of course. And uh, I'm not taking stuff to the post office until this COVID stuff's done. There's no point in risking going to the post office. So, um, of course, I need your address to send it to because I have no idea where you live. Uh, next one is from Matthew Davis. Hey, Bill, I've been watching you for about seven years now, and I've always loved your videos. So wondering a few things. Whatever happened to the Astro Van? Astro Van? That's like 28 years ago, 29 years ago. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever happened to the Astro Van? It's been a long, so long, I can't remember. What happened to it um, as well how okay let's do the astro van first astro van i think we got rid of it when we got the black buick and the black buick we drove for quite a while and uh it blew a transmission in it and then we got uh her toyota that we've had ever since um corolla so um the astro van it just still ran great the one winter was, for some reason, really, really hard on the on the body. And the next spring, I'm like, holy crap, you can hear it rusting. It was terrible. So we're like, okay, uh, let's get rid of it. So uh, I think my cousin took it. And uh, he's a tow truck guy, scrapper kind of guy. So he took it. And I don't know what he did with that for that. But uh, long gone. So, but she's into the Corolla now. And it's been a good car. So I need to do an oil change on it soon it's gonna be part of our oil change series and i need to do a transmission oil change i'm probably not gonna do the um the filter in it um in under the pan i'll just uh drain it up put new fluid in it, i think because it's getting pretty grimy and uh it's been in there probably since day one and that's uh, probably due so but uh the actual service on them is quite high for mileage but it, the oil looks kind of dirty so i kind of want to do it but, uh, okay, and uh, the next part of this question was, uh, uh, how's the boulevard doing? There's a story on that. I have given up my motorcycle riding career, we'll call it, I guess, uh, because there's a long story behind, well, not a long story, but, okay, way back, about 2014-ish, somewhere around there, I went for a motorcycle license, got a motorcycle license, it was good. Um, you have five years from that date to, well, you got to do what they call a graduated licensing. So you do, within a year, you got to go to your uh, M2, which I did, got that, done here in town. Remember that part, done here in town. So then you got five years, basically from there, I think it was five years to get your full M license, book your test. And you can do that any time in that five years, whenever you feel you're ready. So I kind of let it, got busy. I let it go until basically the last winter, and then I went in uh, about April, I think it expired in July, in the July coming. So I went in about April to book my final test. Waited in line, waited in line, and it really ticks me off because we don't have a whole pile of people in our town here, but we get a whole pile of people coming up from like the city down north of us, or south of us coming up to this one because it's easier to do the test because there's no big roads or cars all over the place. So you gotta wait in line behind all these people that shouldn't be here. Ticks me off. So, waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally calls me up. Oh yeah, sir, and I could see the relief in her because, you know, no offense on your colors, I'm not racist, but most of these people that come up are a different color. 
okay? She looks at me in relief, like, oh, thank goodness. I'm like, hmm, okay. So she's like, how can I help you? I'm like, um, I'm here to book my M exit exam or exit test. She looks at me like, oh, uh, we don't do that here. I'm like, what? What are you talking about you don't do that here? No, no, we don't do that. We don't do that final test here. I'm like, okay, well, where do I go for that? She's like, um, the closest one is Owen Sound. I'm like, you're kidding me, right? Owen Sound is like an hour and a half away from me, one way. She's like, oh yes, we haven't done tests here for about four years. I'm like, you're kidding me, right? And she, I'm like, why? It's like, well, we're so busy doing other tests. I'm like, yeah, because all these people are coming up from the city. Ticked me right off. I'm like, okay, forget it. So we already had our slingshot and my wife never felt safe on the back of the motorcycle. She never really liked that. So we already had the slingshot. So uh, I thought, okay, forget it. So I dropped it all, canceled all the insurance, still have my two bikes. I still have the uh, Boulevard and the, the uh, dual sport Suzuki. Um, but I don't know, Dylan might want to get his license. Maybe by then they'll be testing here again. I don't know. But that ticked me off. I'm like, wow, really? You can't test here because you don't have time because you're doing all the regular car tests from all these people coming up from the city. Wow. It's like, no, no, you live in that district. You should be staying in that district, not coming up here. But they allow it. They don't care. So anyways, that's the story behind that. Uh, um, so you and a few other people have inspired me to ride. So that's good. As long as you're riding and get your license is fine. That's awesome. And here I got screwed. But I did enjoy it while, you know, but nobody wanted to go out with me. So I'm always out by myself. It's like, I get boring kind of fast, you know. Like, I love going out and up and down on the dual sport on the, you know, with the uh, dual sport on the back roads and stuff because it's got the semi dirt bike tire on it, but street bike tire on it too. And it was, it was pretty awesome. But uh, nobody ever wanted to go out with me. So it's like, this is getting boring now. So at least, you know, with a slingshot, I can go out with my wife. Or we can go to one of the car shows at one night or something with it, right? So. Uh, so he says, inspire me to ride now. I have an 82 Honda Mag Magna VF750. That's a big bike. Nice. And last but not least, uh, how's Iron Man? And I hope he's doing well. Sincerely, Matthew from North Carolina. I haven't talked to Iron Man for a wee bit. Do you have time? Him and I will uh, uh, send funny Facebook messages, I'll say, back and forth <laughs> in the messenger. That's about it, though. Um, he's about the same. He hasn't changed. He hasn't got any better. He hasn't got any worse. Um, he, I don't know how much I should say, but he was basically poisoned from where he worked. So everything, I think, was settled from that eventually. And he's um, trying his best to stay afloat with uh, his health. And, uh, you know, he's, some days he's not very good. So um, I seen him there last summer, though. Him and his wife went camping, which is good. <clears throat> they went way the crap up middle of nowhere, and uh, they stopped here on the way by. So... I haven't really talked to him a whole lot. I haven't really gone down to see him because of the COVID stuff right now too and, and stuff, right? But um, I wish you get out and see him someday. Maybe we'll sneak the camera. Uh, next question from Daniel. Anything unusual or creepy happen at the cemetery? I think I got a video on the channel. If you look back a bit further, there's a creepy thunderstorm night. We did a video of creepy stuff in the cemetery. Um, I'd have to watch it myself now because I've kind of put it out of my mind, but nothing really. Uh, I don't believe in the ghosts and all that crap. I mean, once you're dead, I think you're dead. You better enjoy it while you're here because I think after that you're screwed. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people have a lot of different beliefs, and I don't know. I think once your light's out, you're done. So enjoy it while you're here. That's why I get motorbikes and tractors to play with. and You can't take it with you. Once you're gone, you're screwed. Might as well enjoy it while you're here. So, yeah, check out that video. Uh, I can't exactly remember the name of it, but it was something about uh, creepy cemetery stories or something like that. So, but it's on there. Uh, next is Danny Wilson. This is Danny. I live in Evansville, Indiana. I am 55 years old and I've been watching your videos for years. And I must say, I love your videos. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I want to ask you if you could, uh, if, I want to ask you if, can would you do longer videos and when will you start playing rust game again i missed that game um there's another question coming up soon actually we've been playing on the uh, uh canadian hard times pve for quite a long time 
I am probably gonna, I am leaving that server now and trying something different. Um, just for some issues on there. Nothing with the owner, he's a great guy. He doesn't actually live too far from me, about an hour and a half from me. Which I do want to actually meet up with him someday because that'd be kind of cool, but um, his server isn't hosted really close to us here, so there's always lag all the time. So I, uh, and he's doing like a, every two weeks, he's doing another map wipe. I'm like, no, I can't be doing that. <laughs> I just get stuff started and established and then you're wiping it again. No, I can't be doing that. So um, if you guys remember way back when we started playing Rust on the Minerva server, which we did have issues with, with that guy that ran that. Anyways, um, I got a few guys into it uh, way back then, and um, they are started up their own server now, and I'm going to probably be uh, going on there quite a bit more. And it is uh, BTM2020. Look that up under the modded section, and uh, come on on and play. It's awesome. Great server. It's got a lot of good plugins in it. A couple I wish it had, but you know what? You can make deal with it. I am administrator on there. There's about three of us that are administrators, and then I think they're going to have about two moderators as well. So. I can do things, some things, uh, some interesting things on there, but uh, BT, BTM, as in Bill's T-Max, BTM 2020. Look that up under the modded and then uh, come on and play. It's awesome. Uh, next one is from Aiden the Gamer 79 Hey, Bill, I'm a huge fan from Gree Long. Never heard of that. Near Melbourne, Australia. Woo! Never heard of that place. I've been watching you for years now, but... Uh, I would like to see some more quad and dirt bike videos. Oh, well, we can do that. I got one here I got to do some work on, though. Need some brick work done on it. Pretty much sucks trying to stop one of these with your feet. Ragging on the ground. So, <laughs> we need to do some brick work on it. Um, more quad and dirt bike videos. Also enjoy watching the tractor videos as well. Um, could we also have an update on the other tractor that's been in the, there? If we haven't... Uh, also have an update on the other tractor that has been there for years now, but nothing done to it yet. This, I think he's meaning the mayor's tractor. I kind of went over that already, so uh, I don't know. It's up to him. He was It's his tractor. I offered to buy it from him like two years after we got it here, and he's like, no, no, I can't sell my dad's tractor. No, no, no. But he didn't seem to want to do anything with it, so I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, we kind of answered that already. Uh, this is from Raging Bull. <laughs> Hello Bill, how's the Ford F-250 6.7 Power Stroke doing? And I like all of your tractors. Thank you, they're cool, especially the Ford 2N. The Power Stroke is actually need an oil change soon too. That'll be probably our last or second last of the oil change series because that's pretty much everything I got that needs oil change done on it right now <laughs> anyways. Um, it's good, actually really good. I really want to get the uh, travel trailer pushed out, hooked on, and give that a tug, see how it goes. Pulls my tractors on my trailer pretty much like I don't even know they're there. Like, you know, that AR weighs like 4,800 pounds. It's heavy. It's a freaking heavy beast. And that F-150 I had, it was just like, oh, I don't like this. Didn't feel good. So, um, but this one is really good. And it's got piles of pull power, low-end grunt power. Holy cow. Um, but no, it's been running good. I got just over 10,000 K on it, almost uh, 11,000 now. So kind of getting close to another oil change. Um, I still even haven't even put any uh, def fluid in it. I'm still above about a quarter tank on that. So I'll do that whenever we do the oil change. But that's pretty good, you know, about 11, probably 12,000 K. And you'd have to top up, uh, you know, fill up your def fluid tank again. And no, I'm not taking that def system off. I enjoy breathing. These guys that take these off and they just blow smoke all over the place. Probably not the best thing to do if you like breathing. They put that on for a pollution control thing to keep all that soot and crap out of the air. So, I mean, that's what it's for. And uh, probably good to keep it on there. So yeah, that's good. F1, F250 is doing good. Um, this one is from... There's no real name on this. It says John Still, but there's a whole email address. So I won't say all that, but... Uh, do you think you'll ever be allowed back in the old shop to watch you build things? Uh, no, that is... That part is totally done. It's never going to happen again. Um, unless the zombies come and eat everybody and I'm still alive, then we can make videos down there. No, no, probably never going to happen again. That's why we got to move ourselves up into here that we're working in here. So, um, anyways, next one is from 
Uh, Brendan, uh, hi there, Phil. This is Brendan. Are you eventually going to do a video on the black 2013 black motorcycle? Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to end up selling it. Um, I can't ride it on the roads now. It's not insured or licensed. But I'm not licensed, so there's three things that's bad. It'll probably put you in jail if you got caught. Um, I can fire it up, though. Run around the yard. Stop and turn around and go back the other way. Maybe I'll take it off a sweet jump or something. But no, I'll probably end up selling that one. Even though I really don't want to, but I'm not using it. So what do you do with it now, right? I don't know. So hard to say. Uh, next one is from Vince. I'm in the... Yeah, we're good. Next one's from Vince. Uh, Bill, can you do some potatoes and farm sim? Also, when are you going to do animals again? Can you please do some grass? Someone likes farm sim. Farm sim's good. Can you do some more mowing videos with Dylan mowing the lawn? If I can get him out of the house to mow the lawn, yeah. He's, uh, doesn't want to go too far these days. That's why he hasn't been in a whole lot of videos, but uh, anyways. Uh, have you ever stayed at the Marriott in the Rogers Center looking into the field? Okay, there's a lot of questions there. Potatoes is a definitely a special of its own video where it's very expensive for the uh, machinery to harvest. You don't get much back out of it. So a huge field, you need quite a few machines to do it. So I generally don't do potatoes or the sugar beets or anything like that um, because they do require so much money invested in machinery. Um, which is probably just like real life, but um, the pay of the potatoes when you take them in is terrible. But uh, one of these days we'll maybe do like a small patch or something, like half the field of potatoes and uh, that we're in right now and, uh, and do that. So that'd be awesome. But uh, the fields we got now, so now we bought the second field, we would need probably at least three harvesting machines. And they're, what, 500 and something thousand a piece? So that's a lot of money to get into right there. Uh, what was his other question? Are you going to do animals again? Probably one. I will do animals once we get actually our farm established. Right now in the farm sim, we're trying to get enough money. We bought the second field. Now we can start farming the two fields and making more yield, making more money. So then we'll be able to buy, like, some buildings. We'll have to buy, actually, that lot that we're kind of squatting on right now to put all our buildings and stuff on. And then, yeah, we'll do animal pens and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so Dylan Moen, I don't know, it's, we've got this little chunk of garden that our neighbor here gave us, and she, we agreed with her that we'd do some mowing on this side of it for her to kind of relieve her a bit. She's like 85 years old, right? So, I mean, it's, that's a lot of mowing for her. So we, we, we usually do more than that anyways. But uh, he'll, he'll be out mowing, I'm sure. Um, whether he'll put a camera on and do it, I don't know. Probably not, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, you ever stayed in the Hotel and Rogers Center? No, I've never stayed in the Hotel and Rogers Center uh, for the baseball or any, any events because it's really expensive. And if you could actually get one, you'd be lucky because um, they're probably booked way, way in advance for, you know, everything. So, no, I never have, but um, never even been up there actually either. So, uh, Stefan is the next question. Hi, Bill. Warm wishes all the way from uh, Wellington, New Zealand. Wow, you guys are getting all over the place here. Enjoy watching your videos. My question is, now that you have a workshop at the house, um, do you still miss the cemetery videos? All the best, Stefan. Not really. Do I miss doing that down there? Not really. You guys have missed a lot of things down there that I've had to do, though. Um, little projects here and there. I can't think of any offhand, but you basically missed rebuilding the whole entire clutch on the AR. We did some of it up here, but a lot of it I did down there because I needed my uh, parts washer and stuff, and I thought, oh, I'll just do it here. Uh, the bearing and everything. Oh, well, we got you a little bit of video on it, I guess, but not a whole lot. A um, couple little things here and there that I've had to do down there because the welder or whatever was down there. I'm not really set up for welding in here. I think this place would catch fire pretty quick, so I'd have to have, like, something set up, and it's probably what I'd do if I ever, say, built that other second half of the shed there. I'd probably put that as, like, the welding shop, right? I'd have to put... Um, what I would probably do is do a floor like I got in here and then pour like a thin layer of some kind of material like concrete or something or even a concrete floor but uh, I don't know how I'd exactly do it but I haven't really thought of it but uh, do it so if any sparks hit it it's not gonna catch fire right now mind you I did a lot of welding down there in that shop on a piece of plywood on a bench and it never caught fire ever they just kind of and then fizzed out they don't stay hot long enough, I think, to actually catch it on fire. 
I had a couple little burn marks into it, yeah, but never caught fire, so, you know. But there's a lot more wood in here, like the floor, the walls, that was all blocked down there, right? This is all wood, so I don't really want to do it in here. Um, so yeah, no, I, I kind of don't miss it. I do all my stuff up here now as much as I can, so, um, you know, we got our own. We basically got um, essentially three workshops, if you want to think about it. I got this one here, I got that one down there, and I got one in my basement three toolboxes all over the place so i mean i got stuff all over the place so it kind of sucks having three but you know if i wanted to do something inside well i got a toolbox and tools in there i want to do something out here well i got tools and toolbox here if i want to do something down there well i got tools and toolbox down there so i mean kind of sucks that i have to have three workshops but anyways the next question is from Corey h hi bill are you going to do a restoration on the newest ford tractor not a full restoration because i still want to be able to use it if you paint it all up and get it all clean and used it, painted it all up and then took it out of the field and got it all crappy, I'd be pretty ticked. So I'm going to just basically do it so it's reliable and hopefully not leaking too much, <laughs> as much as it is now. Um, but not full restoration paint, no. I want it to be rough looking. I want it to be look, look at, like it's really had a hard life. Like, you know, one headlight working and the other one's kind of just not there and just rough. I want it to be rough. So. When I do use it, I don't feel bad using it, too. <laughs> um, have you ever thought about doing a small garden tractor restoration? Since you're limited on space, maybe something like a mini tractor, like that mini tractor you had years ago. Wow, you've gone back a long way, too, because I still have that. The wedge field. That thing was tiny. <laughs> I can't believe someone used that thing to mow, mow grass. If you guys haven't seen the wedge field, I'll have to dig it out someday. It's buried right now, so I'm not going to be today. Um, that would be something I would uh, like to see since I have over 30 vintage track garden tractors from the 40s to the 80s. Wow, you got a collection there. I'm only 21 and self-taught. Awesome. Something like me. I'm not 21, though. I wish I was, but anyways, I'm not anymore. <laughs> it's been 21 years since I was 21, so half older than you are <laughs> anyways um little garden tractors see i like to get and do stuff no offense against any of yours i like to get and do stuff that i'm going to use so like this too and i'm going to use it for plow days and stuff you know and and other things i might even use it for hauling dirt or something i don't know well it's hard to say but now boris was kind of not really that sort of mentality thinking because my stepdad, well, my mom was in uh, nursing care when she was real bad there a few years back, and um, he needed money for her care, so I'm like, I'll buy the tractor from you. Here, take and go. So I got the tractor kind of that way. So mom died 2019, January, so it's been over a year now since she's gone. So, um, But, uh, yeah, a little tractor, I don't know, I got that little wedge field still, and it's sitting up on the shelf in that other garage so I mean I'm not probably gonna ever use it it doesn't really have a lot of power for anything maybe hauling me and maybe mowing uh, that's what it was sort of meant for but no probably probably nothing that small I like to kind of get stuff that I'm probably gonna use see I got the AR in case my other tractor happens to have a problem goes down I can drag the big trailer with that and it works actually pretty good now that the clutch is fixed so that's a kind of a backup thing right now, I don't really have another thing to dig a grave with. I could do it with the mini axe, but it would take probably forever because it's not, doesn't move a whole lot of dirt, that thing, per hour, we'll say. But uh, anyway, so no, I wouldn't probably get into a small tractor. All right, we got three questions it looks like left. Michael Burns. Bill, I love all your videos. I had a quick question about you playing Rust. Are you looking for a different server? Oh, so I described the server, the BTM2020, under the modded section. Um, I'm getting a little bit frustrated with hard time server. Yeah, same here, same same deal. You know it, I know it, time to leave. So, and uh, you know, I suggested many things to him. That, ho that server was hosted in the Emirates. So, I mean, that's like 11,000 kilometers from me so that's why there's probably a pile of lag with it. I suggested it. Why don't you move it here? Oh, and he had a bunch of excuses. You know, I got nothing against the guy that owned the server. He's a great guy. But I was like, I'll help you. I'll even give you money if you bring it over here and make it better for us. He didn't want to bother. So I'm like, okay. 
so I'm going somewhere else. That's why I'm doing that. So yeah, BTM 2020. Uh, but yeah, I got nothing against him. He's a great guy. You know, he did have a pretty good server, but he, uh, I think he had another guy in it, in with him, so he didn't want to do anything about it. He didn't want to interrupt that. So, but anyways, um, um, so that's, yeah, that was just always from California. Mike, yeah. Okay, so our next one is from, there's no real name on it here. Oh, Rob, yeah, sorry, right at the bottom. Uh, hi, Bill. Uh, first video I watched you was showing you off your propane power Grave Thar, which I still have. Don't hardly use it too much now, thank goodness, because that's a pain in the rear end. Sometimes I need it. Uh, it was pretty cool. It works good. So basically, that's like a big hood dome thing, flat on the bottom, open at the bottom. So it's like a, a shell, goes over the grave, big propane torch, <laughs> one end, exhaust pipe at the other, melts the thrust out. If we get more than 12 inches of frost, I usually shut down the cemetery for the winter because that thing only thaws about an inch an hour. It's not very fast. So it, um, you know, you get more than 12 inches and you're out there for a long time in minus 30 degrees. Do it in the spring. <laughs> Wait till it thaws out. Uh, yeah, so question, do you still have the your potato can? You mean this one? Stuff your potato can and it was lots of fun watching you put stuff in it you didn't like. You should bring it again. Uh, hope you have a great day. Stay safe, Rob. I have a few potato cannons. I've got this one I just showed you. This is my uh, sawed off one, short guy. It's kind of sticking a bit. Works though. And then uh, that shoots like a normal sized potato. And then I've got one that will shoot Gatorade bottles. <laughs> I've got one that I made that's like way bigger. Okay, so let me show ya. Uh, I'm gonna show ya. So this one shoots, and this is like a two inch or something pipe. So that's a good question now. I don't really remember. It's been a long time. There's a lot of dust on this potato gun. Inch and a half. So that's an inch and a half. And then three inch. So it's like a bullet, right? So you get all this pressure neck down to this guy and it makes it extremely awesome. I also have one that shoots Gatorade bottles, like I said. And it is a three inch pipe. So like the barrel of that one. Oh! three inch pipe <laughs> and it starts here at like a four inch I think that is I don't remember what size that one is uh, yeah four inch to three inch so this one will shoot Gatorade bottles it's loaded in there with like a, a cloth want to shoot it I do okay so you got to get a this gives a little bit more of a seal that should fit there it's been a while since I fired this thing. Oh, that's a nice seal. It's either gonna blow up that or blow me up. What a way to go, eh? So you use your broomstick for the rammer down there. And then you gotta get, uh, get this up here. It's no, there's no gas in it yet. And if you look down there, hard to see, but it's sparking. So we got to get that in our propellant. So I use propane. Not very super lethal. Don't use hairspray because the hairspray will just bung up your your sparker. Cap it off. Let me go outside. You see where that landed? <laughs>
let's go see where that landed. So we started here at the shed. There is nobody, absolutely nobody, in the entire universe, if it goes bigger than universe, the whole entire anywhere, that can throw an empty Gatorade bottle that far. You wanna see how far we went? Here it is, over here. <laughs> I don't know if the camera caught that, but that's pretty good. That was going against the wind too. So we started there. We shot where Dylan is way over there. So that's three, four, five. times three. So if you can fire that 100 feet, about 99 feet there, roughly, from here to the, the other side there, if you can fire an empty Gatorade bottle that far, I'll give you $10 billion. You've got to throw it by your hand though, just throwing it. How far can you throw an empty Gatorade bottle, Dale? Grab the bottle there, Dale. Let's see. Let's see how far you can throw it, Dale. Come on, Dale. Give her your best. Fire it. What'd you get? Like 20 feet. You suck! <laughs> yeah, see? You cannot throw it as far as that thing will fire it. It is awesome. So yes, I still have my potato guns. Now, I'm not gonna fire that little one off because you actually should use potatoes in it. And my wife doesn't want to burn up potatoes right now, but you could jam a piece of stuff down there, towel. So where'd the towel go that was in there? I'm gonna have to go look for that. I don't know where the wadding went. You could jam a piece of towel down, put a few rocks in, jam another piece of towel down, and fire it like a shotgun. But uh, no, we won't do that. So yes, I do have still potato guns. Never did put those on how to build those though because that's very bad publicly showing that. Um, that is it. I got one here from Tony, but it just says, Hi Bill, how's it hanging? I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, I love your videos, but it, he doesn't have a question. So so there we go. That was uh, 24 questions, I think. So that's awesome. So if you've got a question for me, I'll answer. It's appropriate. I'll answer it. Uh, send it to BillQA at yahoo.com. And I'll do another question and answer video. So thanks again for watching. Catch you all later. And you guys have a good day. Oh, that went even further that time. <laughs> that went a lot further. It even blew the label off. <laughs>that was about the same just past that big pole if you want to make it go further put some rocks in it or leave some liquid in it let's try that okay one more shot with rocks Wait. at the container oh, <laughs> you should and i got uh, safety glasses on four three two <laughs>
very small actually it's gotten a lot worse <laughs> um, I had built this chunk on just for a little extra room I had chickens in here myself too and uh, it def definitely didn't look this bad then I think it's probably probably about due huh but I got a few things in here stored that I got to find homes for wow even these shingles have got bad these are the ones that I did that's not good so the whole thing might be junk so but uh, oh, my wife's planting some things in some keeps the animals out right um, what do we got in here really there's not a lot of stuff I need in here there's no go-kart frame remember the old go-kart frame there's some firewood an old tiller and I got some old tires in the back for the old truck that I don't even have anymore so you know what Somebody's upset. Oh, hello. Somebody's in here upset. Somewhere. Hear that? I don't know what it is. Sounds like a bat. Buddy, I got a couple of things. Okay. Freaking out. <laughs> Something's upset. I got a couple of things in here that I got to get rid of first or find new homes for. And uh, then I think we could figure out whatever's squealing in here. Something's not happy. This chair my daughter made in school last year. Are you mad? But yeah, no, this thing could come down probably any time. I poured a nice floor in here too whenever I did it. So it's got a nice floor. So yeah, she's getting tired, this thing. She's had a lot of, a lot of weather put on her. And uh, definitely an eyesore. So one of these days we'll uh, try to pop the windows out again. And then uh, come at her with the back hoe and the uh, thumb probably. And just start shredding, chopping, busting, throw it in the trailer and then go get rid of it. It's about the only thing I can think of anyways, unless I just throw a match in her. But uh, something's living in there. <laughs> it was squawky. But uh, yeah, anyway, sorry I missed that question. But there you go. One of these days we are going to cut this thing apart and get rid of her demolish her it will be uh, won't take too long I don't think got to be careful of the new building there right I don't really want to smash too much and have that fall into there and wreck the new part of the building there so but uh, anyways that's it thanks again for watching catch you all later remember send your questions to billqa at yahoo.com if you want any questions answered so appropriate questions anyways we'll catch you later thanks again for watching you guys have a good day